afternoon and welcome to the Baltimore City Fire Department July 4th Fire Safety Press Conference. I'm Assistant Chief Roman Clark with the Baltimore City Fire Department and I'm being joined today by Mayor Brandon Scott, City Council President Nick Mosby, Councilman Robert Stokes, Police Commissioner Mr. Michael Harrison, and from the Baltimore City Health Department, Kim Ishman. So we're gearing up to celebrate the 4th of July in Baltimore. Extremely excited to view all the red, white, and blue, which you can see around the firehouse today. And besides that, the grilled hot dogs, corn on the cob, and burgers. Mr. Mayor, we will have veggie burgers and veggie hot dogs. Fireworks and sparklers are some of the main attractions for the 4th of July. As public safety agencies, our goals is to ensure the safety of all residents. Now I will turn it over to Mayor Scott to help kick off the holiday weekend. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chief, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have finally made it to the 4th of July holiday here in Baltimore. It's an exciting time for us here. And not only are we gearing up for the 4th of July, but after two years of not having the fireworks display at the end of Harbor, they will return on Monday. Uh, thanks to the help and support from our partners at BOPA, on Monday, July 4th, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., we will have an evening uh, celebration of festivities and fireworks at the Inner Harbor. There will be music, uh, uh, live spoken word, all kinds of entertainment, so please come down and bring your families. Uh, this will truly be a special event for our community, residents, and visitors. There's nothing more exciting than to see uh, fireworks bursting in the air, uh, celebrating the, the independence of our country. And as residents are celebrating, it's important uh, that we remind them of the dangers of fireworks and sparklers. Uh, the safety of my community remains my top priority. And today, uh, collectively, we want to remind you about those dangers and to be sure uh, that everyone is safe as we celebrate the 4th of July. And as we continue to begin, I also want to say that we're going to have two uh, we also have the, uh, the Cherry Hill uh, Music Festival that will always also have fireworks down in South Baltimore and Middle Branch. So we have many, many places, great festivities for us to celebrate the 4th of July. And I hope to see you not just at one, but both. And now I'll turn it over to our Council President, Council President Mosby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in the home of the Star Spangled Banner, uh, it's nothing more special than seeing fireworks uh, in our harbor on July the 4th. Uh, we're here to encourage everyone uh, to come out and participate uh, in the return of fireworks in downtown. We thank the administration and the mayor for his leadership uh, for ensuring that Baltimoreans can enjoy that. By saying that, uh, we don't need you to get your own fireworks uh, in your alleys or at your barbecues or anywhere in the city of Baltimore. Why do that when you can come and listen to all the amazing music see all the amazing talent, and watch fireworks display over the city skyline downtown. So again, thank you to uh, the mayor and his leadership. Uh, thank you to the fire department, uh, Assistant Chief uh, Clark, uh, for your leadership, uh, as well as to the Baltimore Police Department. And with that, I'm going to call up uh, the police commissioner, Commissioner Harrison. Good afternoon, and thank you, Council President Mosby. Thank you, Mayor Scott. Thank you, Chief Clark. The Baltimore Police Department and I want everyone to have a safe and enjoyable holiday weekend. And as we return to large gatherings and citywide celebrations, please remember that fireworks are not only illegal in Baltimore City, they're also extremely dangerous, as you heard from the mayor and the chief and the council president. Fireworks can cause loss of vision, severe burns, other serious injuries, and in even fires. In addition to physical harm, they can also induce mental distress. Our officers will be on the streets looking for illegal sales, distribution, and the illegal lighting of fireworks. In addition, we will be actively patrolling looking for anyone discharging firearms into the air, which are both dangerous and illegal. Bullets come down with the same velocity and force as they go up. So anyone caught firing guns into the air will be arrested and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. 
As has been previously noted in our short-term deployment strategy, the summer months bring with them additional challenges and a change in tempo that calls for different approaches in addressing crime. Each of the nine districts each produce weekly crime plans that implement uh, the appropriate staffing and deployment to include various types of proactive enforcement and community engagement. We have very broad plans that include summer initiatives to provide substantial and significant support for major holidays and high profile events like July 4th activities. We will have enhanced deployment downtown in our harbor area as well as multiple places around the city throughout the entire Independence Holiday Weekend. So I encourage residents to report locations where fireworks are being stored, ignited, and sold, and especially locations where guns are being fired. Those who wish to remain anonymous may use the Metro Crime Stoppers tip line at 1-866-7-LOCKUP. Make sure you have a plan and expect large crowds and some road closures. So please celebrate safely and thank you. All right, thank you, Commissioner Harrison, and thanks to our public safety officials that are here today. I wanna to echo all of your messages stressing the importance of safety. Throughout the Independence Day holiday, it's a time of family and fun, and it's also a time to keep safety in mind. Fireworks-related injuries are most common on 4th of July and New Year's Eve. Fireworks can cause death and injury, including burns, contusions, lacerations, and foreign objects in the eye. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission annual report, fireworks were involved in an estimated 9,100 injuries treated in U.S. hospital emergency departments in 2018. Children may be especially vulnerable to harm from fireworks and should be supervised during the 4th of July festivities. Never allow young children to play with or ignite fireworks and make sure your kids and others watch fireworks from a safe distance. Call 911 immediately if someone gets injured from a firework. It's just not children. There have also been several high-profile fireworks accidents that impacted pro athletes like Jason Pierre-Paul and CJ Wilson of the NFL. Both men lost fingers in fireworks-related accidents, and tragically, even a former Columbus Blue Jacket goaltender died after being hit in the chest with a mortar shell that tipped over. So remember, if you will be drinking Drinking alcohol, please be responsible. Do not drink and handle fireworks. Do not drink and drive or drink and swim. Consumption of alcohol not only puts you and others at risk while driving, but you're also at heightened risk of drowning if intoxicated while swimming. Please be careful this 4th of July and have a safe and happy holiday. I'll turn it over now to Lieutenant Holmes. Good afternoon, everyone. As Commissioner Harris mentioned, fireworks are illegal in Baltimore City. But I really would like everyone to remember that they are very dangerous. Over the past several years, fireworks have caused life-changing injuries. There are no safe fireworks out there. Thousands of injuries are seen in the emergency room each year during fireworks being mishandled. Causes of, uh, range from Small and large contribute to 11% of emergency room treatments. Sparklers are not safe. Kids can be injured by them. Temperatures from, spa, uh, from sparklers can reach up to 2,000 degrees. Baltimore, we're back. Firework displays returns this year at the Inner Harbor, and we hope that everyone visits to help decrease the usage of independent fireworks throughout Baltimore City, visit the Inner Harbor and enjoy the firework display. If residents are interested in helping this neighborhood shine, we hope strongly to urge and cons um, consider safe alternatives. Glow sticks, non um, noise makers, confetti balloons, and other setups, projectors outside to enjoy the fireworks from at home or online. Whatever you do, please make sure that you celebrate safely and enjoy yourself this year during the fireworks and during the 4th of July. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Councilman Stokes. 
Uh, Mayor Scott, Commissioner Harrison, President Mosby, uh, the Health Department had already emphasized caution. What we're saying is come down to the Inner Harbor, enjoy yourself where the fireworks are done professionally. I don't want to look at the news and hear about our young people, somebody had their hand blown off or they have these burns because they're using the fireworks, what the President Mosby said, in the backyard, in the cookout, in front of their house. So we want to make sure that everybody is safe here in Baltimore. It was in a national news a station that said they actually have a shortage of fireworks, and I hope they do. Thank you. And I'll turn this over to uh, Chief Roman Clark. Well, now I'll take it. We'll, now we'll take questions. Questions, anybody? Oh, hold on one second. Ava Joy. My check? You good. Okay. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you will have the answer to this, but after two years away, do you guys have any ind indication of how many people will be coming down to the Inner Harbor? Well, we know there'll be lots and lots and lots, and we'll be uh, welcoming them there. Uh, we're going to have everything in place. We'll be there. There's safety plan, all the things that we have when we have large-scale events, and we want everyone to come out and enjoy themselves. Okay. A question for the commissioner. Um, we have seen recent incidents where people are having brazen attacks with officers right there in the vicinity. Is it a really hard goal to reassure people that they will be safe when they come down to the Inner Harbor? Well, what you've seen is, and what I want people to know, is that in every one of those cases where police were right there, in many of them we were right there to apprehend the person who did it so we can hold people accountable. This will be no different. We have a robust deployment strategy uh, in downtown every night this week through the 4th of July, and we have a robust deployment strategy everywhere across the city looking for people igniting fireworks, shooting guns in the air, and we will be taking swift and strong action when we find those people doing that. And I have a follow-up for you. Yesterday, we saw crews who were out putting up signs to let people know the fireworks are coming. When I was driving by City Hall just now, I saw what seemed to be a mobile solar-powered um, system with cameras. Is this something that we can expect to see deployed around the city for you guys to keep watching what's happening? Every, every tool in our toolbox we will be using uh, to include mobile cameras, mobile lighting, anything that can help us see what we otherwise wouldn't be able to see so we can keep people safe. I also have a question for the commissioner. Will the department be receiving help from outside law enforcement agencies? If so, who and how will they be assisting? Well, we have regular assistance on, on a regular basis from the sheriff's department, from school police, MDTA, and that will be the same for this weekend, all across the city and then especially downtown. Will your mobile command unit be deployed? The mobile command unit, if operable, will be deployed in multiple areas across the city throughout the weekend. And my last question, uh, you, the department has released some surveillance pictures in recent shootings. We had the one in Fells Point, the other the triple shooting at the shopping plaza. Any developments from releasing uh, those pictures in either case? Um, we have some developments. I think you, talk, you heard us talk about um, solving the case in the Fells Point. The other one on Broadway Street is still under investigation. No arrests there as of yet. Uh, and detectives are still following leads. We need more information from people who would have seen or heard something. We need them to call us right away about that. All right. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, the uh, autopsy report has come out dealing with Jalen Ferguson. What happens with that investigation now? So it's still an ongoing investigation. We're conducting it. It's been ruled an accidental death, even though it's an overdose. It still continues to be an investigation for detectives to ask more questions about how and why, but it's still ongoing. Could there be possible charges? If we find information that there was some type of foul play that led to that, the answer could be yes. But right now, we're still in the investigation phase of finding out, uh, we know what happened. It is about finding out how and why. One other question dealing with the uh, use of the helicopter for the Patterson Park pool. Mm -hmm. I know we've been trying to reach out and find out more about that. Can you comment on that and exactly the reasons for doing that yeah, and sure. if this will stop or what happens? Sure. Our helicopters fly over the city and check on all of our pools, uh, all of our pools every single day. What we know is that that pool was successfully closed at 6.30 p.m. 
but at some point, young people climbed over the fence. We have evidence of that. Entered the pool. Helicopter spotted it, called it out. We were able to successfully uh, remove all of the individuals from the pool and secure it again. Last question. And Barry, to that point, I just, I just wanted to be noted that the helicopter is used for so many things, right? You, you can hear Fox Trout daily putting out descriptions of young people who are missing, trying to get people in the community to help us find missing children. So this, when you have a tool like that, you have to use it, especially when you have young people that are missing or vulnerable adults that are missing, seniors. Those are the kind of things that they consistently do with Foxtrot. Sir? Frank Plaza, the shooting uh, earlier this week, there were cameras around. Have there been any repairs to the cameras since the audit report came down regarding City Watch specifically? So yeah, th this is an ongoing thing, right? Uh, because you're talking about such a large uh, infrastructure investment, cameras go down, we get them fixed, we put them back up. We know we're consistently looking at how we can expand City Watch, bring other cameras on. So the answer shortly is yes. Uh, there's always changes. There's always work being done for cameras. We went through a new, new vendor over the last few years to make sure that we're getting the best performance out of our cameras and looking to see how we can expand and grow the network. Were y'all able to get any surveillance from the cameras there at Frankfurt from that shooting specifically? Well, I guess what I'll say first is that we, the city, doesn't have CCTV cameras at, at Frankfurt and Sinclair. And that's a whole, a whole other discussion about uh, infrastructure that's needed on the ground that's not there yet. But I'll let the commissioner speak to the other portion. So we're, we're always looking for camera footage, whether it's public cameras or private cameras. As the mayor said, there may not be a public camera there, but we're still looking to see who would have captured it if it perhaps was on private cameras. I have one last question for the commissioner. Sir, do you have any updates on the sergeant who was injured earlier this week? Yes, he is. He was upgraded the other day to fair condition. Dr. Scalia called me personally to advise that his tube was removed. He was speaking and alert uh, and having conversations, uh, repairs through surgery to his leg. And uh, I called the mayor, gave the mayor that good report. And so uh, we believe that his condition is still fair, although he's still hospitalized. Very good. When did you get that update? Today or yesterday? That was uh, yesterday. Okay. 